about 13 and a half billion years ago, the universe as we know it came into being. And if Earth's history was a 24-hour day, Homo sapiens would be a mere three seconds. Yet, we humans have been busy. We've traded fires for screens, iron for silicon, wools for Pomeranians, and we have every conceivable convenience at our fingertips. But we're still only scratching the surface of how technology will impact our lives. My name is Simone Yatch, and I am uh, quite the expert in the relationship between humans and technology. And I will be traveling across Europe to see what this digital transformation actually means. that has one of the fastest internet connection in all of Germany. Imagine typical Wi-Fi like a congested stairwell. It's crowded and it's slow. But if you have fiber, it's like having a private express lane all to yourself. A lightning fast, buffer free connection everywhere. And I'm testing it out by being connected with uh, how many devices? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Like 15 video calls with myself. <laughs> I'm pretty sure when my therapist told me I need to connect to myself more, this is uh, the opposite of what she meant. Also, I am gonna regret this, but I'm gonna try to unmute myself because I don't know, I just wanna know what it would sound like. You ready? Okay, I think we just ripped a hole in the fabric of our digital reality. Because when I unmuted myself, one of our gimbals died. Just in case you were planning to have 15 video calls with yourself, just know that <laughs> weird things might happen. It's like digital nails on chalkboard or like anti-ASMR. I don't like it. <laughs> At least the internet's fast. Knowing yourself is more than just talking to yourself in video calls, and I want to see how tech can take self-awareness to the next level. So we're off to Finland to a state-of-the-art health lab, and maybe finally I can figure out why my muscles prefer hibernation over exercise. Okay. Oh, nice. <laughs> How was it? It is nice. This is the closest that you can get to cycling outside, but still having all the instruments to collect the needed data and make the analysis. So you have an infrastructure of scientists and yes. a lot of athletes. Yeah. In Finland, Huawei is working to get further in the wearable research area. This is the big downhill ski simulator. So athlete is actually using special shorts and we can check the live data here. Wait, so he's wearing... Shorts. Data shorts? <laughs> yeah, it collects muscle activation. Quads, hamstrings and glutes. And you can see also left-right balance. So this either means that there is some weakness on right side. Yeah, I want to go save his sky. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, you up. <laughs> you can stop. <laughs> What's up? I just learned that your left thigh is working too hard. Thanks for telling. Yeah. <laughs> I need to work on that. Yeah. <laughs> Have you learned something about your skills or your skiing? But definitely, as you can see, there's all these sensors and stuff. It's a perfect way to, to learn extreme skiing. You can adjust the, the angle and the speed, so it's, yeah. it's easy to, to adjust it the way you want. 
and here we have Olympic level wheelchair racing here with this uh, treadmill we can see that when the peak power is happening when the wheel is rolling his stop maximum speed is almost 40 kilometers per hour how are you feeling <sighs> Fine. It's very important data and of course we can ask in our training. Now we are here in the swimming pool room. Ah. So as you can see, there is a current coming from the wall where we can simulate different speeds for the athlete. We call it gas exchange, oxygen uptake and CO2 breathing out. And also her heart rate. Here on the screen we can see live the data to build the fitness or even performance. You're collecting data from what's going inside of her body, then outside of her body of like analyzing her movement. Yeah, motion analysis. It's nice because now she doesn't have to go up for air. In that sense, it's easier to improve the technique. So first step, make sure you have perfect technique. If you are skilled enough, you can do any, yeah. any swimming. Learning technique, the most important is this feedback loop. I would be curious to see what your swimming looked like right when you started and at the end. I think it'll change. Yeah. Because you kind of like learn where you need to place your arm and your hand. In my case, it's more like to look at your swimming because of course you think like, oh, I feel like Michael Phelps. And then you look at yourself from the screen and it's like, all oh, right, it's not kind of. So just like a YouTuber, you spend a lot of time just looking at videos of yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the best way to to learn. Yeah. <laughs> okay, it's my turn to get physical. I am our in-house normal person and I wanna see what I can learn about my health. But first, we need to get my resting data and I am definitely ready for this part of the test. Okay, Simone, are you ready for testing? <laughs> so next we have this uh, VO2 max test. You will be running until exhaustion and we will increase the speed after every three minutes. Okay. During the test, you can actually follow what happens inside your body. Uh, heart rate and how much you take oxygen and how much you breathe out carbon dioxide. How many kilometers should my goal be? As far as we can. Yeah. <laughs> So heart rate raised, but still the breathing rate is really stable. So now we are going nine kilometers per hour next three minutes. Looking good. Feeling okay? <laughs> you can do this. I'm gonna make it proud. Push it through. Yeah. Lactate 6.0. Looking good. Thank you. How much longer? 10 seconds. Push it through. Heart rate still raising, 193. Three, two, one. Well done, great. <laughs> Come here, we take the last lactate. Perfect, nice job. Sorry, it will hurt a bit. Okay, perfect. You made it, nice job. Let's see the results later. Did I look cool? Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Press air. Hi, Simone. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long day. Yes. <laughs> Are you ready to go through the results? Looking at the numbers, the most interesting one this fitness test, which gave you biological age. Mm -hmm. 29? What? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and your VO2 max, the maximum amount of oxygen your body can use. 30 to 39. So good. Good. Yeah. You should start to run more. Yeah. <laughs> and maybe you can improve this even more. I hate that the main conclusion is that I should do more cardio. <laughs> <laughs> the other side of this is that I had like a lot of health issues a couple of years ago and I feel like I've still been scared to push my body. Yep. Now I'm getting to the point of like, no, I can actually push my body and it's good for it. Yep. Especially as you're like getting a little bit older, it becomes more and more important because you realize that health is the foundation of absolutely everything that's good in your life. Exactly. I think human body is 
is so complex system that we don't know everything. So I think through academic research that will kind of find even more data points which can help people to understand their body and mm -hmm. then make the right decisions in daily life. This is good motivation. Our bodies are putting out endless amounts of data and while knowing that my body is 29 is fun, sometimes data can be the difference between life and death. So I'm heading to Barcelona to learn more about what it actually takes to digitize our healthcare. Welcome, Simon, <laughs> to the Hospital of Santa Creu and San Pau. Thank you. This was founded in 1401, more than 600 years. During these six centuries, there happened a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And this campus is a new strategy that we have created, focusing on innovation and technology. Here in Hospital San Pau, our aim is to offer the most complex solutions with the most human treatment. And for that, technology is key. For instance, in cardiology, we have done the first heart transplant. We created the first emergency services in the country. We are very proud as well of our neuroscientists. And now we are transforming all our uh, information systems. Because before, like all the data you had was just the notes that your doctor took. Exactly. Right? And now you have millions of data points on every patient. I mean, the more technology you have, the more data it creates and the more technology you need to manage all of that data. Exactly. We now have the tools to help us literally navigate our own bodies. But you know what's cutting edge? Being able to explore the insides of our bodies without having to use any cutting edges. Let us show you what happens after the acquisition of the CT images. Mm -hmm. So here you can see the heart of the patient. This is the digital twin of the patient's heart. Yeah. To be able to do simulation or to do what's called video surgery. It's like VR OR. Let me show you here the heart, 3 printed. Mm -hmm. This is life size, is one to one. Are hearts this big? Uh, depends on your size. In normal life, the only way you would ever get to see your organs is if something goes very, very wrong. <laughs> but now it's like you get to see it. And if you want to do like that simulation, each patient can take one terabyte of, of, of oh! data. How many patients do you have? <laughs> um, 200,000 patients per year. Imagine that. So is this mostly to help the patients understand or is this also helpful for the doctors? Both. When you have to explain to the patient, mm -hmm. when you touch it, I think I understand them much better. And the other side, doctors use as a trainer. Mm. You can get a lot of repetition yeah. and make a lot of mistakes. Without and, risk, yeah. no? Okay, Simon, now we will go through the ER journey. The motions are, get your hand and grab it. Close your hand, now you can move it. That's cool. I feel too powerful for my own good. I shouldn't be able to hold somebody's heart in my hand. It's kind of like uh, taking an online course in heart surgery. And I think my doctor's license will arrive in the mail any day now. Can you see? Yeah. So just enter VR. Oh, oh, wow, there's stuff in here. <laughs> oh, interesting. This is the aortic valve. I'm a piece of blood. <laughs> and I'm just going through. The coronary artery? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then I go out here, I assume. Oh, no. He lifted it above your head. It's not good for your back. <laughs> oh, oh, hey. When I tell you that you have a special place in my heart, this is where I mean, right there. Yes, in the left atrial appendage. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, this is from 1404. I mean, it's just crazy that it's equal amount of time from 1404 to now as from now to like 2,600. This would be like somebody in 2,600 looking through my MRI scans being like, whoa, that's so old.
here we are in our data center. Let me introduce our IT director. It's David. David Simon. Hi, Hi, nice to meet you. Oh wow, it's a lot of they're talking. Bueno, es la sala de servidores. Nos basamos en las cabinas de almacenamiento Huawei que nos permite atravesar esa transformación. And it's a total new world for us. Es aquí en un hospital tienen que estar en un entorno más seguro y protegidos ante cualquier ciberataque, por ejemplo. It's hard because you both need to be able to access it very quickly and for a lot of people to have access to it, but also keep it safe. Para nosotros la confidencialidad de los datos de pacientes es algo muy importante que encriptando todos estos datos. What happens if something breaks? We have another data center in, in the cloud. So yeah, plan A, plan B, plan C, exactly. plan B. Yeah, it's interesting to look at this and be like, they're like, not humans, but so much data from humans. I mean, from probably thousands and thousands of people and got it all here. Without this, we cannot survive. I know my body, like it's me, I'm in it. But what I realized is that knowing your body doesn't necessarily mean that you understand it. Fortunately, we're constantly shedding these little bits of information and it's everything from our DNA to the air that we exhale or how many steps we've taken in a day. And interpreting our body data is kind of like closing the language barrier between you and you. Just like having a heart to heart with yourself.